cotton plays a significant role in the social and economic life of many developing countries. Importance of cotton is very visible in many African economies. However, many cotton growing African countries face several challenges, including poor reputation, low marketability, and price discounts of cotton due to poor quality control, missing monitoring, and quality assurance systems, resulting in high contamination levels of their cotton. In order to address these key trade related issues and challenges, the International Trade Center ITC with funding from the European Union has initiated an Africa-Asia Business Partnership. This initiative has been launched to help the key stakeholders in the cotton industry, growers, gineers and spinners to better understand issues of mutual interests and to forge long-term collaboration between them. As a part of this partnership, Squire Textiles Limited a premier spinning company in Bangladesh has teamed up with the ITC to work with African cotton producers and exporters. Squire Textiles uses both machine harvested cotton and hand picked cotton. The machine harvested cotton generally comes from the USA and Australia, while the hand picked cotton is imported from India, CIS, and African countries. Hand picked cotton is, in fact, better cotton than machine picked cotton as the cotton maintains its intrinsic fiber quality. Squire Textiles uses large quantities of African cotton for its spinning mill and therefore is interested in this collaborative venture with African cotton geners, exporters and traders to ensure supply of quality cotton. Unfortunately, many spinners that import and use hand picked cotton often complain about contamination that undermines the quality of its products that are cotton yarn as well as fabrics and clothing produced out of it. <laughs> The management at Squire Textiles believes that the issue of contamination can best be addressed through this collaborative partnership with African cotton producers and geners. We have been using African cotton in our spinning process for about 15 years. The cotton we are buying mainly from European traders, not directly from the African cotton farmers or the geners. European traders or merchants, they buy that cotton and uh, supply that to us. Uh, there are some problems very common, which is uh, number one, contamination. Uh, this is uh, foreign fiber and uh, polypropylene contamination. And also we find uh, mixed uh, packed bales in the same bale many different different color grades are uh, built together which uh, drastically reduces the value of the cotton the spinning value of the cotton and uh, ultimately in our spinning process we add we have to add around three cents per pound just to segregate the contamination we believe there is a ample scope to improve because other hand-picked countries like India, Central Asia, even some African countries already put some effort and improved and got better results. Production flow and system at the Squire. Squire Textiles has established state-of-the-art textile units to process cotton lint. It follows two standard spinning technologies. These are ring spinning, carded and combed yarn, and open end or rotor spinning. In these two production technologies, the certain common procedures are followed in making yarns. Manufacture yarn in two spinning process. One is open end spinning process, and another is ring spinning process. In case of open end spinning process, at first we select the raw materials, then we open the bales and segregate contamination from bales. Then we rebuild, rebuild the materials and these materials are then uh, fit in the uniflock machine, lay down and in lay down also we segregate contamination. In the blow room we use 
Uniflock machines, Unimix machines, uh, Uniclean machines, and fine cleaner machines. In Blorom, we have another process also that is MBU line. In that line, we use stack mixing. Then, this, uh, in Blorom machines, we segregate contamination from contamination sorter and metal detector. These materials are contaminants are segregated from these materials and reuse these materials. Then the materials are transferred in the cutting section. We get cut sliver in the cutting section. These cut slivers are fed in the breaker drawing. Six doubling is used in the breaker drawing. Then these breaker drawing slivers are fed in the finisher drawing. Six doubling also used here. And finisher drawing sliver is fed in the autochrome machines. In autochrome machines, we get autochrome yarn. These yarns are transferred in the heat set machine for conditioning. After conditioning, these yarns are packed into 50 kg bags. This is the open end spinning process. And in the ring end spinning process, same as opening spinning process. But in between breaker drawing and finisher drawing, we add another two process. One is unilab and another is combar with a view to remove short fibers from the sliver. After finisher doing, the materials are fed in the simplex machines where robing is produced. These robings are fed in the ring machines where yarn is manufactured. We produce two types of yarn. One is normal yarn and another is fancy yarn. In case of normal yarn, we produce hosier yarn and oven yarn also denim yarn. In case of fancy yarn, we produce slab yarn, siro yarn, injected yarn, and core yarn. These yarns are transferred in the winding section and make cone. These cone are fed in the, transferred in the heat set machines for conditioning. After conditioning, these cones are packed into 50 kg bag. This is the spinning process in our factory. Identification of contamination. At the spinning process, adequate care is taken to ensure that there is no speck of impurity in the cotton lint. Squire Textiles has put in place a comprehensive quality control and monitoring system to track down and eliminate the risk of contamination at various stages of yarn production. Most of the uh, African origin cottons having uh, contaminations. So uh, from those contaminations, major one is uh, polypropylene. And uh, these polypropylenes are uh, coming uh, with cotton in uh, different uh, types. One is uh, some intact polypropylene and uh, some uh, polypropylenes are coming in fibrous form. So these uh, fibrous uh, polypropylene contaminations very difficult to sorting out from the cotton, especially uh, white color polypropylene. So uh, in this case, uh, cotton uh, we have uh, uh, three segregation stages. One is the manual sorting. Number uh, two is uh, uh, cotton shorter machine in blow room, and uh, number three is. Uh, yarn clearer in winding. So in uh, a manual shorting stress, we normally in uh, some origin of African cottons, we need to use two stages. First stage, we use uh, two lever per bell, and uh, second stage, one lever per bell, because because of intensity of the contamination. So. Then we uh, use cotton shorter in blow room and uh, machine having some limitations so some contamination after cotton shorter going through the process and uh, then we use uh, contamination uh, for contamination uh, clearing devices in winding machine. There are also some uh, li uh, limitations. So. In all stages, some limitations are there. That's why 
सम कॉन्टामिनेशन गोइंग थ्रू द यन एंड फाइनली इट अपियर्स इन द फेब्रिक Squire Textiles since it was set up in 1997 has also meticulously studied the nature source and flow of cotton contamination at various stages of its processing it realized that contamination begins at the cotton field and is determined by the conditions in which cotton is being harvested gathered wrapped stored loaded and transported another major source of contamination may be at the ginery its working environment and level of environmental awareness of its workforce scoyer textiles identified over time a host of impure substances that creep into the cotton bales in short the most common types of contaminants are as follows pieces of polypropylene dyed and raw white yarns human hair animal hair bird feathers jute threads rope long bark pieces mint wrappers paper plastic strings pieces bamboo from basket cable wire nuts bolts metal pvc clothing pieces and color fiber wrappings of chocolate biscuit pickles tobacco cigarette shampoo leaf seed seed coats environmental wastage etc Uh, we found uh, these contaminations uh, in uh, three wells of african cotton so uh, here uh, we found some uh, black yellow uh, blue and uh, white color polypropylene contamination and uh, some uh, pieces of uh, uh, color different color fabrics and uh, some human hair some uh, um, uh, some other contaminations and uh, some uh, hn rope and etc preferred bell covering or wrapping cotton fabric wrapping is the most preferable bell covering material compared with others in the context of bangladesh most spinning mills have the following covering preferences 95% prefer cotton cloth wrappings with metal or plastic straps 26% prefer thick polyethylene bags with metal or plastic straps 11% prefer hessian cloth with steel straps besides other impure materials scoyer textiles identified non disposable polypropylene and polyethylene fibers as the most hazardous contamination because they create prominent spot defects both in color and white fabric if they cannot be detected and eliminated from the cotton during the spinning process all this may be attributed to the lack of awareness in the course of the processing of cotton fiber at the factory level lack of standard monitoring and supervision system as well as inappropriate and ineffective ginning processes may also lead to retention of impurity in the cotton bales problems of contamination for spinning mills high level of contamination in cotton lint has severe financial implications apart from the loss of credibility in the international market as a consequence spinners need to invest more in labor and upgrading technology to remove all forms of impurities while processing cotton lint into yarn despite large investments in cleaning technology and employing hundreds of additional staff no spinning factory can guarantee that all contaminants are detected and removed from the cotton we have to depend on uh, visual inspection for identifying contamination uh, usually uh, we have to open the cotton bales and inspect a bulk quantity to identify the contamination the presence of contamination in the cotton cottons of different origin especially african cotton we face this contamination problem huge we do consume 8 to 10% of uh, african cotton actually the contamination that uh, present in the cotton bale there is a easily 
passes through the spinning process to the yarn and up to the fabric and garments and finally the garments rejects for the presence of contamination that's why the consumer wants contamination free yarn for contamination free fabric usually contamination free yarn can be ensured with the contamination free cotton and for this reason the USA or Australian contamination free cotton is in good demand but still we have to use other origin cotton for the availability and other intrinsic quality parameters we are to use some contamination sorting equipment in the spinning blue room line and naturally this sort of contamination uh, sorting equipment or uh, the machines are costly so this is additional cost involvement the additional manpower at the same time additional machinery uh, is a big cost involvement for the contaminated cotton it is uh, hardly possible to ensure contamination free cotton even with this contamination sorter so there is a chance of the presence of contamination in the yarn we have to additionally use some contamination clearer in the winding section to clear the contamination from the yarn that also a huge cost involvement uh, in the spinning so this all comes uh, a big hassle a disturbance in the production line the production losses increase of wastage and uh, decrease productivity in the spinning but still some contamination passes through the yarn and converts it into fabric and garments finally the contaminated fabric uh, goes for rejection so that is the final financial compensation comes up a tiny impure material in cotton lint would spoil hundreds of thousands of years of fabric resulting in cancellation of order by buyers colossal loss of investment and overall loss of reputation of the company damages also occur in various forms such as one cost of employing additional staff two risks of fire in the blow room line due to presence of metal parts damaging wear of the blow room and cutting machines three decreased yarn quality as machines cannot detect white polypropylene and it remains in the yarn and four reduces productivity and efficiency sometimes the spinners have to compensate its customer with three to five percent of the export water value have to compensate its customer five to seven percent of the value of the letter of credit yarn is returned from weaving and knitting mills or yarn had to be replaced recommendations so what should be done Squire textiles recommends to eliminate contamination at the source that is at the growers level during harvesting gathering up cotton piles wrapping loading and transporting to collection centers and on orders to the ginning factory pickers have to be made aware of the ill effects and damages of contamination and the need for foolproof clean harvesting packaging and storage systems adequate attention for a neat and clean environment is a must to avoid contamination and achieve absolute purity while processing seed cotton and producing lint in the form of cotton bales Squire Textiles recommends 
that cotton farmers and cleaners work closely together to reduce the risk of contamination and to ensure purity of the cotton fiber. This will help both to raise the standard of the fiber and its price. Squire Textiles provides a few practical tips to cotton farmers, most of which can be followed without any financial implication. Just a little attention and care can do wonders. We have found the farmers and the geners use a huge quantity of polypropylene bag, even fertilizer bags, uh, since those are available. But these polypropylene bags and the strings of polypropylene uh, easily comes into the fresh cotton and contaminate it. And this sort of white polypropylene is very difficult to sort from cotton because it is of cotton color. Uh, even the machine cannot detect it. So it is highly recommended not to use, not to uh, uh, bring the polypropylene bags in the ginning process, in the picking and uh, uh, ginery house uh, during the transportation, even wrapping the bills. Uh, besides this, during the processing uh, in the machine, the oils and grease may contaminate the fresh cotton. Even uh, the condition of the ginning house, uh, that is the cleaning condition of the ginning house to be ensured uh, properly and with a strong supervision they should maintain it. Clean fill before picking. Don't use polypropylene bags in the cotton field. Use white cotton bags for harvesting. Strong supervision during the picking, ginning and baling process. Workers to use aprons, scarves and must not carry food materials like chocolate, food packets, etc. in the field. Careful transportation to the ginning factory. Sort date fiber, color fiber, oily fiber before ginning. Careful handling to avoid stains of cotton from oil and grease. Keep good flow conditions at the ginning factory. Sort out contamination during ginning. Use contamination detection machines during ginning. Use automated ginning equipment. Never stir cotton on wet surfaces. Machine bundling. Avoid polypropylene or hessian bag wrapping material. Use cloths instead of polypropylene for packing. Avoid use of polypropylene bags at every stage. Pack or wrap bells with gray cotton fabrics. Keep polypropylene away from cotton. Keep color mats and damaged cotton away from seed and lint cotton. And introduce quality assurance measures at all stages. Cotton experts emphasize that hand-picked African cotton is highly valued as it retains its intrinsic fiber quality which gets lost in the sophisticated machine-aided process in the USA and Australia. If only the contamination could be reduced or eliminated, African hand-picked cotton could fetch a premium over machine-picked cotton of the same grade. Squire Textiles believes contamination can be avoided by building awareness and monitoring capacity of farmers and the workforce at ginning factories, and improving monitoring and supervision systems in the ginning factory. People awareness in the uh, farming stage, uh, the farmers and uh, people who are engaged in picking cotton should be aware about their uh, use of uh, fabrics, the hairs, even uh, the use of polypropylene back better it is recommended to use cotton bag for collecting cotton uh, from field to ginning house. Benefits In Africa, cotton is grown on small scale firms and thus millions of farming families are directly involved in the production and processing of cotton. Therefore, if the lint purity is maintained while producing clean lint, Hand-picked cotton can fetch premium prices over machine-picked cotton. Squire Textiles proposes a long-term business relationship with African farmers and geners as they have a common interest and stake. Through regular exposure visits, exchange of knowledge, and sharing of best practices between cotton producers, 
Geners and Spinners, this will help to build a better understanding, leading to long-term South-South business linkages in a mutual win-win situation. The ITC Square Textiles Partnership to support African farmers is a bold but only a first step in the right direction. Bangladesh, as the Bangladesh Textile Mills Association BTMA 2011-2012 report says, gets 78% of its export earnings from textile and textile-related products worth about $20.13 billion. The sector generates more than 5 million jobs and about 12% of Bangladesh's GDP. Obviously, it will be beneficial for the African geners or the farmers because that, that will command a higher premium price from the international market. Therefore, by joining in this business endeavor with Squire Textiles, the African cotton and textile industry will be able to contribute significantly to employment, amelioration of rural poverty and contributing to achieving the Millennium Development Goals. The International Trade Center. Export impact for good.